This week on Movie Mayhem Live, reviews of Halloween. The Hate You Give. Science Fair. For some reason, Jeff Howard wants to review Goosebumps. But first, we gotta take you to a little river town in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, Manaka. It's time for Movie Mayhem Live. Hi everyone, I'm Chuck the Movie Guy and welcome to Movie Mayhem Live. Uh, we're gonna have some chaos and mayhem today because the show was pretty much on cruise control till about three hours ago when Jeff Howard, who I hadn't heard from in uh, uh, two weeks, calls me and said, hey, I got an idea, let's start from scratch. And uh, it's just been chaos. Uh, but all right, let's get some things going on here. Let's get the uh, back monitor humming there. We get the uh, little corner bug action. We need the desk monitor going. And of course, the all important join the show crawl. And please, as always, zoom in here because we have to talk about you joining the show. At the top of the page on Facebook, underneath the logo, you see this contact us button. All you gotta do is click on it, put in your email and name, and you can be on the show talking movies with us, asking questions, who knows. But please, we're looking forward to you joining the show. We need some input. We need all the help we can get, actually. And speaking of getting help, uh, we have to travel to Toronto. So get your passports out. Box office Bonnie lives high atop the CN Tower. And she's afraid of heights. Bonnie, how is it going there? It's going great, and uh, I'm getting better with the height thing. So oh, good, 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 yeah. good. <laughs> there we go, a little delayed reaction on your lower third there. Say, hey, uh, got some exciting news. Guess who's back on the show? Who? Who could it be? It is actually uh, in Vegas. You know how he got kicked out of the, uh, well, the whole thing. He had to go to court at the MGM, didn't pay his bill. Now he's at the win. We got to go talk to him. He's at his presidential suite. It's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, where's he at? He's somewhere around here. I know the wind, is, there he is, there he is. <laughs> Jeff, are you there, buddy? Jeff, what do you got there? Oh, well, this is our Halloween show. There's a new box of cereal out there. Halloween Crunch from Captain Crunch. How cool is that? Oh, <laughs> It turns cereal. your milk green. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Let me take a look at that. Now, where, what is that? Who is making that cereal? This is Captain Crunch. It's General Mills. That's pretty oh, cool. Look at that. I really Little cool. ghost that turns the milk green. You guys uh, aren't in the spirit. Look, I'm. I'm even. I just came from my night job too. You know, at the coroner's office. Oh yeah, let's take a closer look at that. Very nice, a bloody shirt. Although you. Know, I did not have time to change. You know, I, I. I'm dedicated to this show, so I have to be here. Hey, but you know who just uh, uh, who loves cereal? Uh, we got to go to Detroit and visit uh, Greg Russell. Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> I atop the top floor, downtown Detroit. Greg Russell, hey, hey, buddy. Hey, Greg. hey, how are you guys? How fascinated were you with that uh, cereal? Ooh, I, I, <laughs> it's kind of making me realize why I haven't eaten cereal in about 30 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I tell you what, Captain Crunch was one of my favorites as a kid. I really yeah. loved the Crunch. Have Jeff, have you tried the Crunch Berry, the complete uh, Crunch Berry cereal? Oops. Oh, absolutely. Oops. It's called Oops All Berries. Of course I've tried it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I haven't, but I can remember, did the inside of your mouth used to always get cut up when I ate Captain No, the roof of my mouth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It yeah. still yeah. does. Yeah. So. I had Apple Jacks last night at midnight, and my mouth's all cut up this morning. Okay, so oh, we uh, we have a very special uh, Halloween edition yeah. uh, of uh, Movie Mayhem yes. Live, and it's not mm -hmm. just because uh, it's Halloween but it's actual, the movie Halloween. And what is interesting about this movie is, um, Danny, Mc, first of all, I love Danny McBride, who's better always behind the camera than he is uh, in front of it, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, you're wrong, yeah. by the way, just uh, throw that in there. Okay, all right. <laughs> but, but anyhow, so they, re, they did a sequel to Halloween, and it's not, you just gotta forget that two, three, forget the rest of them, this is a direct sequel to the first Halloween movie, and uh, let's uh, see what the cast of the movie has to say about it. By the way, if you think you, she's kidding, uh, she's not, <laughs> because uh, this right. is Jamie Lee Curtis's movie. There's no doubt yeah. about it. Uh, yeah. Per, I, uh, I, Perseverated. I, I like that word. 
What? Oh, really? No. I had to look yeah. it up. I don't know. Triple uh, word score. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, yeah, really, yeah. There you All go, right. baby. Now, Jeff, <laughs> you are probably the biggest horror fan here, so I want you to start off yes. and tell me your general impressions of this movie. Well, I don't do impressions. I'm a film critic. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Nielsen, I have to credit that. Uh, first of all, I have to go back a little bit. Uh, I'm really proud of this. I got this is for Halloween Resurrection, and look at look at the very top here. I got the top billing, the most terrifying movie of the summer. So scary you'll be watching it from between your fingers and underneath the seats. <laughs> uh, I was so I was so wrong. Now, but wait a minute, I have a question for Greg Russell. So yeah. um, if what they're saying is true and the movies two, three, and so forth didn't happen, that therefore that quote is null and void because it never happened oh, right oh my god Greg? yeah that's right that kind of puts it out there in the twilight zone yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay all right I, I just, just grab my yeah, moment you, 2002 yeah and just just yank it right out of my hands i defer yeah, to you cool. jeff tell us tell us about this movie uh, well first of all you've got john carpenter back and that is important because with his creative guidance and mostly he did the the music for this. He reinterpreted the theme he's known, he's written, that he's so famous for. There's a great featurette about that too. His sons are also into music and they're also showing how they do all these great sound effects with the, with the guitars and all that and the reinterpretation with the tonalities of that famous theme. And uh, I was kind of skeptical because, you know, I, are we really going to rehash what happened in 1978? Just think it was 40 years ago. And what I came out with after this film was over was not only was it an incredible, fun, horrific experience, but this is one of those rare movies where I could feel the energy of the audience. I could feel a pin drop, especially the third act of the film. And unlike the original film where five people died, we have, we counted 17 victims in this. And some are really brutal. Wait and a, a majority of the... Were you what? counting 17 victims? I wasn't counting the victims. Were you, Bonnie? We no. did. We did on the way home. <laughs> okay. We did on the way home. We, we were going <laughs> right. through them all. Hey, all right. come on. You know? Okay. All right. Because I thought, I turned to him. I said, man, this is really a high body count in this film. And a lot yeah. of the most horrific murders you don't even see, they're implied. Right. You know, and uh, right. so overall, it takes place in one night. It's it's quick. It's down and dirty. Some of it's very familiar. Uh, but overall, I mean, this was a this was a Halloween romp. I mean, I had the mm -hmm. best time with this film. Okay. Had some problems with the plot, especially the third act. And after yeah. a while, Jamie Lee Curtis's character was going to start throwing cat at but during the Simpsons. You know, so I thought she yeah. kind of got annoying as the movie went along. You know, being the boy. Calm down now. Enough of that crazy talk. Let's, you know, get get some yeah. sort of centrist to her. But uh, overall, man, this was a blast. It yeah, was. Now, now, 70 Bonnie, million I'm, I'm skipping over you for a reason, but Greg, okay. come, give me your thoughts here, buddy. Yeah, uh, my thing is, you know, I, I was not like a follower of any of the Halloween movies, you know, before in the past, but I knew all the characters, of course. So, yeah, we did enjoy this one. It does have some nice jump along moments. Plus, also, I like the way it kind of like tipped this hat to the one from 40 years ago. Or it had the thing where it's a girl's running and falls on her own. And, you know, okay, that's going to happen there. And then there's one part where she's trying to escape. And it's like, should they run for the big street light and the road where you see the thing going on? Or should they run through the wood? I'll run through the wood. That's much safer and a better idea. I talked to some yeah, fanboys and girls after the film. And just like Jeff, they really enjoyed it. So, hey, I had a good time there. And uh, we did a popcorn and have a lot of laughs and uh, a lot of scares. Now, there's uh, two critics here that uh, hate <laughs> horror movies. In fact, I don't go to them. I never go I. to them. And I know, yeah. Bonnie, you don't like them either. And uh, we deliberately went to this movie because how can you not? How can you right. not go to this? Right. So now we're going to take a little twist and see what Bonnie thought, who, a woman who probably hasn't seen a lot of horror movies and also hates them. Well, I, first of all, I've seen a ton of them, but I watched them like this. Oh, okay. Like, okay, that's how I watched Big them. Big difference. Like, with my coat over my head. And, okay, yeah. but I had to see this, A, because I really wanted to see what was going to happen 40 years old, uh, forty years later. I also wanted to see Jamie Lee Curtis. I was, If she had not been in this, I probably would not have gone. And so my new thing about horror films are, I think I psych myself up so much. I get so worked up that when I sit in the theater, I'm like, this wasn't so bad. And I had such a good time at this film. I really, really liked it. Did I jump a few times? But did I scream? No, I didn't scream or anything. And I did not mm -hmm. kick the person in front of me. So that tells me. <laughs> no. I, well, I, I can tell you from a guy who hates horror movies. And I, yeah. 
What? Oh, I'm sorry. You said something there, Bonnie? Oh, we lost oh, Bonnie. Just lost me, I think. Okay, okay yeah, there Bonnie's go. gone. Uh, no, I just, I'm here. I just have to say that I, you know, I, I'm actually very proud of myself, but I actually, I, I can't tell you how much I enjoy my, myself at this point. Okay, film. so I and, despise horror movies, never go to them, and I went <laughs> to see this. Now, I saw the original, of course, and uh, a long, long time ago. Right. I had a great time as well. Uh, and and you know, what I what I appreciate about this movie was, yes, there was some gore, but they didn't make it gratuitous, like slime or blood pouring out. I mean, mm -hmm. there were a few shots here and there, but you said a lot of it was in your mind, but they went to the old school, uh, you know, you know it's coming, you know it's coming. But right. the silence of this movie terrified yeah. me. It's just, he's walking, No, there's no sound whatsoever, and he picks up a knife and so forth. But here's, here's the thing is, is I'm like, you know, first of all, horror movies to me are ridiculous. The plots are never any good. So, of course, we're, you know, you see the spoiler free thing. And I like, first of all, they have to get Jason or Jason. I call him Jason. They have to get <laughs> Michael. Michael Myers out of prison. I'm like, how are they going to get him out of prison? So th they come up with a vehicle, no pun intended, for him to get out of the. the and I'm like. Yeah, first That's of the all, original, well, though. He escaped well, from the mental institution the same way. Okay, well, I did not know oh, that. Yeah. I forgot that. 40 but, years later. But, but here's right. my thing. I'm like, wait a minute. Why is that happening? That would never happen in real life. And I'm like, well, how did he do this? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, I'll just let that go and continue on because it had to happen for the plot. But then later, and this happens several times in the movie, everything becomes for a reason. It's like, oh. <gasps> Oh, that's how that happened. That means that, okay, all right, all right. It's like there was a plot, general, somebody hmm. plotted this movie out very well. And there was, I don't know what your problem was with the third act, Jeff, but to me, all the plot holes were being filled in. And that's what I loved uh, most of all, the fact that. Uh, and get, it, your, get your cat out of the bag thing ready, ready? Okay. Uh, one thing that really shocked me was J Jason. Now you got me doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it Michael is Mike Murray. Michael, Michael Myers from you know Austin Powers, uh, he um, he he killed that thirteen year old kid. Yeah, he so. killed that kid right. at the beginning. I think mean, that really shocked me. Yeah. And yeah. there's a scene where he's going through a house and there's a baby in the crib. Oh, we thought, God. is he really I... going to cross the line yeah. and kill the baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh come on! I didn't say if he did or not, okay, Chuck. So no, right. it's not a spoiler. But the <laughs> but cat is out of the back when he killed that little boy. I was like, yeah, that right. was just. I'm like. Yeah. We were yes, nice kitty. We were yeah. in for yeah. something that anything could happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And real quick, my my and my attachment to this movie, 1978, 12 years old in high school, junior high. If you didn't see this movie, you were nobody. Also, 15, seeing Halloween two, Halloween three, doing the the modern ones. So I have a long attachment to the Halloween films and the horror. I mean, I grew up high school in yeah. the 80s when you know the height of the second golden age of horror and for them to come back 40 years later and do such a great script and such a great way to mm -hmm. to celebrate this film I, I you know it's going to make a fortune they're going to make more it's universal oh, but I, I just thought this is this is amazing film it's so i was really happy right. with this and danny mcbride he was only a yeah. screenwriter and a producer you know he yeah. i thought he was in it but i'm glad yeah. he wasn't yeah yeah all right <laughs> let's go let's go backwards here give me a letter grade go I, I give it a b b plus yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. B plus for you. What about you, uh, Jeff? I give it a B too. I don't give plus or minuses, but oh, yeah, I give it I a know. B. I know. You don't give it a B or minus. So, uh, Sorry. Right. Those are right. only Bonnie, for grades. Blame. What are we yeah. doing, Bonnie? I'm sticking with a B as well. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's I, a... I, listen, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I agree. It was a, There was a few yeah. things missing from it. That it wasn't perfect, but it is a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm definitely yeah. but a solid with B. With an audience. I'm with an audience. With an, oh, absolutely yeah. with yeah. an audience. Right. Yeah. The I'm vibe was crazy. Yeah, don't wait for it to come out. Yeah, you're watching it by yourself, yeah. right? Go see it. Have fun with an audience for sure. And I'm giving it a B plus because I loved it just like Greg. I was so surprised how much I liked it and how well done the movie is. So that is uh, Halloween for us. And uh, the next up is The Hate You Give. All right, you know I can't. Every time I see Common now, I think of the BoJack Horseman uh, Common joke. <laughs> From this season that just came out makes me laugh all the time. Uh, now Bonnie I can't and I get into that show. I can't get into that oh, show. I love tried. Bojack. Uh, so I think I think Greg and Jeff are the only ones that saw this movie. Is that correct? No, I, I did see because I had been traveling the okay, past so, week. And so uh, all the right, was... let's go right yeah. to the review then with uh, Jeff Howard. With Jeff, I'm the only one. The white guy is going to review this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean me? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's it's. <laughs> It's really important for this movie to it's 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 a complicated film and I want to say the right things 
when I saw the trailer for this, I thought to myself, look, I don't want to see a movie where a cop shoots a young black kid and everyone's yeah. protesting. I, I mean, just straight from the headlines, right? But after right. seeing this movie, it is so much more than that. It is, it is so much more than that because I went in dreading this because I didn't want to see that. I have a lot of friends who are cops. And what's, we, what's really uh, unique about this film is that it shows things from all sides, which I think is really important. And it shows that every incident needs to be taken on its own merit. You can't just lump right. every cop in as a, as a racist cop killer. You can't, you can't, you right. can't lump every drug dealer and all that. It takes it. So if you just look specifically what happened when Khalil got pulled over, white cops tells him, look, stay right here. Don't move. And mm -hmm. then she stars like, look, what are you doing? Stop moving around. Stop doing this. You know, he reaches for a hairbrush and the cop, he overreacts or I don't know. I watch live PD all the time. If you see how many times these guys pull over people, you know, that have guns, I mean, guns right in their lap or something like that. They don't, mm -hmm. the cops, you know, they, they, this could be their, the, these traffic stops, something could happen. So now saying that she also now has such a complex character. She's living in two worlds. She lives in her predominantly black poor neighborhood, but her parents got her into a white uh, upper class school where she's getting this great advantage on her education. But she mm -hmm. puts on her white persona when she goes to that school. But now they're trying to say she was that girl in the car on prom night. So now it's like the neighborhood's like, you know, uh, Mackie's like saying, look, I'm a drug dealer. Don't tell what happened because he was selling drugs for me. Your family's in danger. Then the school finds out now she's going to be the poor white. Mm. I mean, the poor black girl that they feel sorry for. This movie has so many layers and so complicated. I mean, it was such a wow. rich story in it. And it's based on the young adult book. I yeah, can't remember so who wrote it. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to say, I think uh, Hornsby, Russell Hornsby, who plays her father yes. in the movie. If that guy does not get an Academy Award nomination for his performance oh, wow. in this movie. He, yeah, I mean, it was that powerful. So I went in this movie really skeptical, and then I came out thinking this was such a rich story. With a, it's a talking points movie. It's something that's it, – it's just an amazing film. It really was. It blew me away. I really did. Well, uh, give us a letter grade. Great. I'm get, are you ready? I'm giving it an A. I, you know, I, really, ah, I hit there the it A is. button before you said A because yeah. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Hey, I got and you know what? I almost I almost boycotted this movie because at the trailer, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to see another cop against, you know, in the trial and all that. Yeah. It's not that I at think, all. I, it's I, not, I, not I, that right at here. all. Right. And yeah, yeah. This, Green, this, I did the same thing. Yeah, this premiered at uh, the Toronto Film Festival and it was on my radar and I really wanted to see it. But I was exactly the same way that you would just describe Jeff, because I felt the same way. I'm like, listen, if I have to watch one more movie about drug addiction, you know, the boy's drug and the father's trying to save his life. I have to see one more person, one more movie about it coming out. And then if I have to see one more movie about a young black kid who, you know, gets pulled over and then just shot by a white yeah. cop. I think we're losing her. That you uh -oh. that you relayed that because I know I will definitely make a choice a chance to see right, it. Because and it's, we've lost it's mostly, again, but whatever. Yeah, because there we are. Star, <laughs> the character Star and Amandela, what's her name? She is just phenomenal in this. Right. And it's about activism. It's about speaking up. It's about so many different things. And the whole shooting is the catalyst, but it's not the movie. We don't go off to the left and just have this whole, you know, it's not that at all. It's it's such a rich, complex complex movie with all these characters having their own moment i mean it was so well done it really was oh uh, well look yeah look, I, uh, look forward to seeing it very yeah, much I'm, I'm actually gonna go see it now based upon your recommendation i gotta make yeah. a call out here uh teresa l rice had the nerve to go on to our movie mayhem live page during the broadcast and say hello via text instead of hitting the contact us button <laughs> and joining the show so teresa l rice call us yeah. Hi, Teresa. Hello. Uh, we all say Teresa. hello to you. Yes, we want to talk to you. I need I'd another girl here. Come on. I know. I would rather say hello to her face. So, all right. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, next up is a movie three hours ago I had not seen. And then Jeff Howard called me and said, hey, did you know the science fair is opening up? And I'm such a geek. Uh, and I'm like, all right, I'll watch it. So, I just watched it. Let's take a look at science fair. <laughs> by the way, that kid is a freaking genius, and I was blown away by his character. The fact that he's failing his classes and his brain works differently than uh, – anyhow, I, I know, Bonnie, you didn't get a chance to see this. Oh, uh, Greg, Greg, did you see it? No. no you so guys didn't get the screener? You should have got the yeah. screener in the mail I, along I, with you – know, I didn't no? see it in my package, but it's not opening in Canada for another couple of weeks, so they're not screening it here and for us until next week. So all right, um, well, I'll look for the screener. I, I, I don't screeners. remember yeah. getting it. Yeah, I, uh, I'll go right to the chase. This movie was awesome. I oh, love the fact uh, how real it was. I mean, the fact that it's a documentary, but how you saw these different people that are so young and so amazingly 
ge beyond genius level. But even if you are a genius and you come up with the cure for whatever, doesn't mean you're going to win because this mm -hmm. is right. the, the way they. This is so heated. The competition. It's all about presentation, you know, and you have to qualify. And I was so involved in some of these characters and I actually had a little tear come down my eye when oh. uh, one of them actually did something in the movie a place in in the movie so Jeff I I, I thank you for making me watch this movie uh, what I, you... I have been I've been seeing so many uh, reviews about this movie and also I'm a film festival circuit guy so I've been seeing this that it's been winning every audience award and every every kind of uh, award you can think of this year and I agree with you that because this is the Super Bowl of nerds this is the Super Bowl of science fairs <laughs> been going on since 1942 they have different categories they have you know health and, and medicine and they have engineering and they have and we meet kids from all over the world they follow a kid from Germany yeah. uh, building a better airplane we follow these two kids who uh, um, have a stethoscope. They're from, is it Brooklyn, I think? Yes. Or, or no, Dakota. They were who, in Dakota. Almost got disqualified because they right. th the judges thought they were using human trials, which turns exactly. out it was just he listened to his own freaking heartbeat and they were about to disqualify him. Wow. Right. And another, and another wow. kid yeah. who uh, found out the Zika virus, and she found a way how one little box that could uh, test the water for an entire town to make sure there wasn't any infection. Because <laughs> And there were kids from Brazil, Germany, America, Thailand, I mean, you name it. And they all come together, 1,700 students, and this was their being judged. And not only did they win, some of these, some of these characters we follow won in their categories, but also mm -hmm. the big $75,000 prize at the end. And it's just, I'm not going to tell you who won yeah. or, or what happened. That. But I'm telling you, these kids are just something special, and it, awesome. you know, there's a science is under attack right now. It really yeah. is, you know. Yeah. And, we need the whole, and you see what Germany, you see what all these other people oh. they say in other countries, they throw so much money and support behind these students, and America yeah. doesn't. Okay. Speaking of which, yeah. first of all, the kid in Germany, he took an airplane design from. How, 70 years ago? 30 years ago? Yeah, I don't the even, wing. Yeah, the wing. Do you know wing. World War II? Yeah, and the he wing. Redesigned it. And Made it work. He, he pretty much changed aviation. For, and yes. Then, and then, of course, the other guy, like I was, I was mentioning, who was failing class, he was failing math. His brain, he reprogrammed. I mean, he actually can program computers and make them algorithms. Think. Algorithm. It, it, yeah. it is just absolutely mind blowing. But the most and this guy, yeah. Oh, I was saying, and that kid was such a big Lebowski. He was the yeah. dude. He wore flowered <laughs> shirts. He didn't yeah. go to school. He was like, he didn't even get his presentation done. He was yeah. working on it in the hotel room and, and hours one, before. Yeah. And, and the, yeah, this guy's the, such a loser. The one know? kid who looks like a, a Hawaiian surfer, dude. He, yeah, he was just uh, lazy. <laughs> he was he, in Kentucky. Yeah, in wow. Kentucky. Program. No accent. Oh, yeah, you know. and he was a genius. But the one that was marked, like you said, when the United States didn't put any, uh, like the the somebody in this movie w wins a major award and wasn't even recognized and went on to Harvard University. Yes, and her school didn't even give her a pat on that the back. That was the girl just, in South Dakota, yeah. and the student, she won an incredible prize, They and that she was saying, preface the movie where she's in school, she goes, look at the length of this hallway, it's all sports awards. Nothing yeah. for science, yeah. nothing for education, wow. and this girl was a Muslim, she was yeah. shunned, she, they asked the people in the school, do you know who this is? And they're like, no, we have yeah. no idea who she yeah. is. And she oh. went on to do yeah. something that was so groundbreaking. Yeah. And hats off to National Geographic because yeah. without them, a movie like this wouldn't have been made. And I'm going to give this movie an A. And the only reason oh. I'm not giving it an A plus is somebody should have spent a little bit of more money on subtitles and made them bigger. <laughs> because I had trouble. It was hard to read, yeah. yeah it was hard to okay. read because a lot of this is being translated for different languages. And it was very infuriating for me. And that took me out of this amazing documentary. Uh, mm -hmm. Jeff, uh, what are you actually going to give this movie? I'm going to give it an A, too. I'm going to give it an A, too. And not only that, it just shows you how we are a global village. That all, I, I identify with all these kids through their cultures and through through education, through the, the, the greatness of science. You know, I didn't, see, I didn't feel like any of these guys were aliens to me. I mean, I felt we were this one yeah. community for the greater mm -hmm. good. I mean, that's okay. what I loved about this. All right. That's good. Uh, and next up, for some reason, Jeff Howard wants to talk. They're just gummy bears. All right, Jeff, what's the, why did you want to talk about this? Is it because it's Halloween? Uh, Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween brought to you by Stubbs A-List from AMC Theaters. That's right. I went and saw this with my AMC Stubbs List. They don't pay me. Don't worry. Movie Pass, they're getting sued right now, by the oh, way. Oh, I know. They, uh, were, yeah, they were in New York yeah. District Attorney. 
Yeah, I told you they were all dirty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk about – I wanted to mention it because it is Halloween. It is Goosebumps with this huge following. I've interviewed R.L. Stein every year for uh, for his books, and, and, and this one I wanted to see because – the effects were fantastic. It has great mood. It has a great scene. The kids are awful. They should be a lot younger. They were too old. I didn't. That's the kid from It. You know, look how much he got bigger. You know how much. Yeah, he got yeah. Mm -hmm. It needs to be kids who are like you know between eight and eleven. You know, those guys okay. were too old. So the kids were not believable. But the special effects, the mood. You know, here the R.L. Stein Slappy's back out. It was his first book. And so uh, it was never finished. So Slappy comes out of this book. He takes over this town for Halloween night. All the classic characters that all the kids love from all the Earl Stein series from Goosebumps, you know, the, the Yeti and all these, they all make their appearance. And of course we have Jack Black at the end. But the problem is we needed more Jack Black. He literally makes a cameo at the end of the film. Mm. And Ken Young, who's from Hangover, he's the crazy uh, he's the crazy neighbor, yeah. you know, that does okay. all. He goes crazy for Halloween, has all. He just, he just spends a fortune on it. He was so hysterical. We needed more of him. We needed an adult to kind of team up with the kids to get us through the night, you know. And Roger Ebert, I know, review the movie they made. I'm sorry, uh, but overall, it had such great production values. It looked so slick. At times, I thought it was like a Nickelodeon film, but it's from Sony. Uh, but overall, oh. I had so much fun with this, and the kids were going crazy, and I just kind of fed off of them, their energy. And just knowing how much Goosebumps means to, like, two generations now. For sure. All right, so okay. what are you going to give it as a letter grade? I would give it a B. You know something? I heard horrible things about this movie. Absolutely horrible. Because you're not 12 and you're not a fan of the film. I told you it was horrible. The yeah. kids. I saw that well, look Well, my there, wife Chuck. tells me I'm like Here, a 12 look at this. Year old, That's you right so there. I, I found this guy. So, yeah. <laughs> we, lost, we, lost, we lost Bonnie again. So. Uh, well, of course so, she's so, so, Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, now I had fun with it. Now that because this is a special Halloween edition, um, <laughs> uh, exactly. There's, ah, there's the witch. All right, yeah, so there's the bunny. Oh. Back. All right, so I say it with love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, Canadian uh, witch. Are they different? Let's turn off yeah. the. Uh, oh, they're much nicer. <laughs> where's the goosebumps <laughs> turning off the goosebumps all right so we're gonna go right down the line and uh bonnie i know you hate horror movies just like i do but uh can you tell me what is uh your favorite movie to watch at halloween or do you have one well I, let's put it this way as you said i don't watch horror movies all that much but the one that sits with me for my whole life and still scares me to this day and it will always terrify me <laughs> <laughs> wow so yeah well i think well you know it's a classic but man it just uh, oh, it's nightmares it's forever for sure yeah all right uh jeff howard you're up tell me about uh your favorite movie for to watch at halloween by the way i have my little mummy pez chuck it reminds me of you so that's why i got so i got the little mummy pez here okay. you know what i'll tell you my favorite movie the moment chuck you start running the footage because i forgot what i told you the silver sphere that became just so famous in all the sequels too and it just it's just an amazing horror film it still holds up it's yeah. very independent very low budget but i just love that dan, dan coscarelli that's that's the director yeah. but i love that film well love i it. noticed that uh did you see the version i just showing you the restoration yes. done by uh yeah by jj abrams i believe wasn't it the, yeah uh, yeah so this yeah. i'm telling you this movie has an influence on so many filmmakers and me as a horror fam Fan, I just love Phantasm. I haven't seen it in a few years. I have the special edition somewhere, uh, but I'm gonna probably watch it because I'm next two weeks. We're gonna have some fun watching some horror films here. All right, uh, Greg, you're up. Tell me about your favorite thing to do on Halloween. What do you watch? Well, it's me and my son-in-law. We always get together to hand out candy. I mean, yeah. What? I mean, it's a classic. What I is? Mean, I and Greg, what's that one line? My favorite line is that "Don't point that gun at my mother." Or what is it? Where he's <laughs> where he gets mad? Someone's pointing a gun at his father or his mom in the movie. Oh. Do you remember that line? I think it was at his mom. Don't point it at my mom. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> and, angry. And, and I'm the other like, thing that I remember most about this movie is that when it first came out, that's before anybody knew, you know, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost. Oh, yeah. Right. So they came to Detroit, and it was those three guys, me and my intern, and in theater watching this movie. No one oh, else that's cool. Very cool. So it's kind of like, hey, what about that? And they're going, oh, that's our friend Gilder right there. And that's, <laughs> our other that's Eric. So, and you the know, British? And the British quad poster for that is one of the greatest horror posters of all time because it yeah. shows all the zombies on a subway car and, and Sean is like like having a panic face oh, yeah, with all yeah. the zombies around. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The American yeah. one is okay. It's like, you know, a standard. But that British one sheet, I always remember him. But, yeah, that was made Simon Pegg a star. Not only one of the best horror films, but also one of the best comedies. I love that film. Right. Well, That's, uh, it's a great movie. Good choice. Yeah, well, for me, it's a little bit different because it's not a horror movie. I, it's a ghost story. It's pretty mild by going. But the name of me about this movie is 
I, when I, the first time I saw it, I had just got my 5.1 Dolby surround sound theater going uh, okay. and everything. This, if you watch this on DVD, this, the separation of the channels is so amazing to the point where they sing this song in the movies like, have you ever seen a girl you know, walking? Well, I have, whatever. But and he Not whistles. one lesson. Yeah. Not one lesson. Yeah, and, uh, yeah exactly. I know. <laughs> Shut up, Jeff. I hate you. So anyhow, um, <laughs> I'm like, what's he talking about? Oh, he's making fun of me. So, um, Cut my audio then. Huh? Yeah. So, no, but, uh, but anyhow, um, it, uh, at the very, very end of this movie, during the credits, I always make sure the credits roll because the little girl ghost is, comes out at the end of the credit in audio only in complete 5.1 separation, and she giggles and laughs. And the sound oh. just, it is the creepiest. And Spoiler it just, alert. Yeah, it Where just, is it? Every time. <laughs> 40 years later. It, every time it gives me chills. That's out of the bag now. Yes, yeah. exactly. So <laughs> I, uh, I can't say enough good things about this. Very easy, I want to say family-friendly movie because I really, I, from what I can recall, anybody can watch it and not have to uh, worry about anything bad. And yes, the graphics are terrible. So uh, well, that it wasn't hair-raising because you wouldn't know it's on your chest, so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's a little boy that yells ha ha to everyone. <laughs> All right. So anyhow, so that's uh, that's our Halloween edition. Uh, yeah. I'm going to roll the credits, and I want to thank everybody for uh, coming right. on the show. And uh, now next week, um, how do you we have Smallfoot still in there? You got to change those. I see that every week. Oh well, you know <laughs> something. I leave. <laughs> I, I add. Feet. I add in case we bring it up because if somebody would have mentioned Smallfoot and I had to draw on the logo yeah. or something, I didn't oh, want to do anything. I think but, we're over right. it. We're over I think we're good. Foot. Well, yeah. I uh, I wanna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about something next week or the week after. So I want you to get your thinking caps on and laugh, hate, love, whatever it is especially anybody watching this, if you have a memory of this that you want to share, we're going to talk about coming up the 10 year anniversary of Twilight. Oh my yep. gosh. So if yep. you have stories about the movie oh, or yeah. you know somebody that went gaga over the books or the movies, please call in, email us. We're going to talk about this probably next week or the week after. So I want you guys to think about your Twilight experiences. Hey it's Chuck, but I, I don't think I've seen my thinking cap since like first grade. So yeah, I, I can, even no, my kid and Caboodle's missing too. You never put my that thing on anymore. Where's like, Dino you know? when I can tag team Jeff? Yeah. That's what I really want to, you know. Where is Shots Gino? Corey? <laughs> yeah. He's a Who knows Corey. where Gino is? I don't know where he's <laughs> at this week. But Gino is going to be actually back next week. He has interviews for us. So, uh, what is. So he? do I. Yeah, and Jeff, Jeff's got interviews. I've Another got documentary. For you too. And we're going to talk about a document. What's the documentary we were going to talk it's about? It's called Free Solo. Free Solo. And about a guy free, uh, climbing El Capitan. Uh, Free-handed. I mean, no ropes, no nothing. Uh, he actually oh. moved to Vegas. He moved to Vegas a year ago, so I got to do an interview with him and the, and the directors. And uh, also, we have Ian uh, Barkowitz. I uh, going back on his last name. Ike, Ike Bernholtz. Ike Bernholtz. Yeah, for the oath. Yeah, we'll have that next week too. Okay. Excellent. Okay, All right. Great. We'll see everybody next week. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye, everyone. All right.